Looking at some more trigonometric integrals, we're going to be using the sum and difference between two angles formulas that you've seen before. So here are the two for cosine, cos of a minus b and cos of a plus b. There are similar identities for sine a minus b and sine a plus b. So let us see how we're going to use these to simplify trig integrals. If I let that be equation 1 and equation 2, if I add the two equations together, I get cos of a minus b plus cos of a plus b is equal to 2 times cos a cos b plus 0. So what we're going to do is use this, and we can divide by 2 on both sides, we're going to use this to simplify integrals of the form cos a cos b. If I subtract the two equations, I get cos a minus b minus cos a plus b is then 0 plus 2 sine a sine b. So divide both sides by 2 and I'm going to use this formula to help me simplify integrals of the form sine a sine b. Similarly, if I'm given sine a minus b and a sine a plus b, these two identities, if I add them together, what do I get? Sine a minus b plus sine a plus b is equal to 2 times sine a cos b. And I'm going to use this identity to simplify integrals of that format. So let's take a look at what we've got. If I summarize these three identities, we've just manipulated the identities we already know, and we're going to use those to simplify some trig integrals. So let's get started. Sine of 2x cos of 5x. That's of the form sine ax cos bx, where a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 5. So I'm simply going to use what's on the right-hand side there, and that is equal to a half. I can take the half out, the integral of sine of a minus bx. So 2 minus 5 is minus 3x. Plus sine of a plus b, which is 2 plus 5, so it's 7x dx. There we go. These are pretty standard antiderivatives. If you want to use substitution, you can do that. But if you've seen enough of them, you would know that that gives me. I have to have a minus a third. I'm going to look at that sign again. Minus a third cos of minus 3x. But the derivative of cos gives me minus sign. And I want to end up with minus a third times cos of minus 3x, so we need to change this to a plus, change the sign there. So the derivative will give me sine of 3x, plus, I've got it 1 over 7, cos of 7x, the derivative of that will be sine of 7x, times a minus, so I need a minus to get it back to the positive. So there we go, but you can use substitution if you prefer that, plus c. So that is 1 over 6 cos of minus 3x minus 1 over 14 cos of 7x plus c. So we simply rewrote this using our identity, and that simplified matters greatly. All right, similarly, if I've got cos of 4x times cos of x, now my value of a is 4, my value of b is 1, and this is the formula I'm going to use. I'm going to use this identity to simplify this integral. So that is cos of a minus b. So that becomes cos of 3x plus cos of a plus b. So that's cos of 5x dx. So that gives me a half. Antiderivative of cos of 3x is sine of 3x times a third plus the antiderivative of cos of 5x is sine of 5x times 1 over 5 plus c. So that you can just simplify 1 over 6 sine 3x plus 1 over 10 sine 5x plus c. Now this one's not necessarily so easy to get back to the original question if we differentiate our answer, but with some manipulation and using your trig identities you can get there. 
All right, so these are, I'm not going to do one of the third type. You can see it's pretty straightforward once I have the identity to just rewrite it. The important thing is to recognize that that's what we're doing here. So we've looked at combinations of cos and sine. We need to look at sec and cosec as well. What we need to remember is the identity tan squared theta plus one gives me sec squared theta. And we're going to treat these the same as what we did in the first video when we looked at sine to a power times cos to a power. We need to take it apart a bit. What you need to remember as well is the derivative of tan is sec squared. The derivative of sec is sec tan. So if I look at the, this example, both my exponents are even. Now, unlike with sine and cos, sine and cos, I looked for the odd exponent. But here, if sec is an even exponent, we like that. Because if I say let u be equal to tan x, du is then sec squared x dx. So two of the secs will be swallowed up. So let me just rewrite this as tan to the 4x times sec squared x, which I can change to tan x with the identity at the top there times sec squared x dx, which will be swallowed up with du. So that's the integral of tan to the power 4x times, now sec squared x is tan squared x plus 1 times, and I'm keeping that sec squared x dx separate because that's going to be du. So now I can change to u, so that's the integral of u to the power 4 times u squared plus 1 du. And all of a sudden, it's quite a straightforward integral. We don't have to spend too much time on that. That's u to the power 6 plus u to the power 4 du. The antiderivative is 1 over 7, u to the power 7 plus 1 over 5, u to the power 5 plus c. And then remember to change it back to x, 1 over 7, tan to the 7x plus 1 over 5, tan to the power 5x plus c. All right, so let's look at one more of these. Here I've got both with odd exponents, and then you need to remember that the derivative of sec of x is sec x times tan x. So one of each is going to be taken away, dx. So let's write it that way. So I'm going to leave this as a tan squared x. I'm taking one of those tans and a sec to the power of 4x. I'm taking one of the secs out times sec x times tan x dx, where I know this whole tail is going to be swallowed up by the du. Now, let's change our tan to sec because we want everything in terms of sec. And we know tan squared plus 1 is sec squared. So tan squared is sec squared x minus 1 times sec to the power of 4x. And this I'm just leaving here for now. I haven't made any substitution yet but I know what the purpose of the sec tan dx is. Now I can substitute u squared minus 1 times u to the power 4 du. And as the previous one, here it becomes a simple polynomial, u to the power 6 minus u to the power 4 du, which gives us 1 over 7, u to the power 7 minus 1 over 5, u to, this is a 7, u to the power 5 plus c and then change it back to our original function, that's u 1 over 7 sec to the power 7x minus 1 over 5 sec to the power 5x plus c. So those are trig integrals. In one of our next series, we're going to be looking at specifically trig substitution, which is a different type of integration and a different technique, but we're going to use some of what we've learned here with the trig integrals in the trig substitution.